What up players, it's Warboss Tail up in this mug. Welcome to the second and final installment of how to paint a salamander's space marine. This is part of my project first founding, which I'm doing a painting tutorial or painting guide for all of the first 20 or 18 rather space marine legions in their current Warhammer 40k color schemes. So here's the salamander space marine we were able to finish. I'm using most of the paints from the first part of the guide. Um, there are some paints that I use like Dawn Stone to highlight the black or Gehenna's Gold to highlight the gold. Uh, most of the highlights or different colors that I'm using I used for the flames such as I believe it was corn, red, um, I think it was, did I use Aerial Yellow for the yellow? I can't really remember, I'm sorry off the top of my head which is not why I'm not doing a paints um, overview. I know that I did use to put these transfers on and make them look hand painted or more natural rather than that transfer look. I used the salamanders transfers off of the Space Marine set as well as the Micro Scale Industries products Micro Set and Micro Saw which most of you know if you've seen my other videos I, I use them all the time. And uh, there's not much else to say for this model. I did another Salamander Space Marine a while back when I was um, updating my my uh, operating system on my laptop. It kind of warped all of the clips that I had first um, uploaded to my computer. So for those of you who've seen the hundred or so of you who have seen that other video, How to Paint a Salamander Space Marine that I did, where I kind of show you the, the skin, how to paint the skin, um, this is that's why I'm using a different one. <clears throat> and that's why I'm using this one. But the flame motif, really, really awesome for any salamanders. Anywhere you can find to put a flame motif on your guy, it's always good. The bright green armor that kind of differentiates him from, from dark angels or other other kinds of armor that are painted green. It's very bright, uh, chameleon, lizard-like green is always, always good to go with. And gold and black to accent. So thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for the next chapter we're going to look at, which is the Raven Guard. All right, here we go. And we're getting started with Wild Rider Red, which is a nice bright orangey red. And that's our first color. We're going to lay it down here. I chose to go with the left leg here. And uh, you can take a look at how I do my flames. But basically, I'm starting from where there's the most paint on the surface, so the, the rim right, of the leg armor, and I'm working my way up and I'm thinning down the paint line to kind of make the little forks, uh, uh, the little tongues of flame like flickering up. Some people I know start from the points and work their way down. I've always found though that when you've got, <clears throat> you know, you're not sure how much paint you've got on your brush, the tip of your brush, or you're still just kind of getting used to the technique, it's easier to cover up any mistakes if you start from where the flame is the, the heaviest. So from the bottom and working up. Uh, this technique is used mainly to decorate salamanders space marines armor but you can also use it obviously for if any of you are familiar with the Legion of the Damned armor. It's a little bit different because their armor is all black and the flames motif is has to be done over black but most of the techniques remain the same. You just want to start with more of a, a thicker base coat probably so maybe corn red and then build your way up to a wild rider red rather than uh, what we're gonna be doing which is kind of the reverse starting with the wild rider red and then adding in the darker and the lighter tones in in just a second <clears throat> the great thing about the salamander space marines chapter is that corn red next like I said is that they're all craftsmen and they're all artisans and they all have a very uh, un unique way of looking at how they want to decorate and personalize their armor. So most chapters do, most chapters are very, uh, they take pride in decorating their armor, but most chapters have their tech marines or their uh, serfs kind of decorate and do, the kind, do, do their armor. The salamanders, uh, from what I've read in the fluff, are the ones that are trained uh, ever since before they were space marines. They're uh, just there in their genetic makeup. 
the strain of, of humans that they've evolved from on their planet <clears throat> of Nocturne are all naturally great artisans and craftsmen and workers, so they take pride in decorating their armor themselves. So what you can see is I'm taking the corn red and I'm painting within the flames, building my way down. So you can see the Wild Rider red in the outline where the corn red is thicker in the middle. Next one I'm going to be doing with Uriel Yellow is I'm going to be building underneath the corn red. So the Uriel Yellow is actually going to be the, uh, the brightest point and it's going to be at the bottom of the armor, the very bottom. And so you can see that I'm trying to paint within the corn red. So the effect, the overall effect that I want is that the Uriel Yellow is the brightest point of the flame. So when you look at the, the armor, you see the Uriel Yellow at the center because it's where the flame is the brightest. Outside of that, you've got the, the, the dark red of the corn red, and that's kind of like the heat haze. And it's, um, it's, it's very, very hot, but it's not as bright. It's kind of dulled down into this dark red. And then outside of that, you've got the wild rider red, which is kind of <clears throat> like uh, the, the outermost part where the, the glow kind of diffuses from that dark red into whatever the light is around it. So that's kind of where the uh, w where my thought process is in making this flame. If you've decided that you would rather have the, um, the, the dark red on the outside or the, the orange on the inside, it's, it's really up to you. You know flames, they look a certain way, but I know in the past I've done flames quite differently. Going back to Wild Rider Red to fix some mistakes and to adjust some, some of these lines. If you are making, <clears throat> uh, fixing some of your mistakes, or if you want to have uh, some of your, m maybe you see that the corn red is painted too thickly, or the Uriel yellow is painted too thickly, and you want to adjust it a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm taking my Wild Rider red, and I'm painting over some of the corn red to kind of make a smoother transition into the yellow. The great thing about this process is it's a three-step highlighting process. But it's up to you as the artist to decide what those steps are, really. Like, you could make your flame completely unconventional and not realistic, but if it looks better to you to have the, uh, the dark red be the furthest inside and then have it brighten as it goes on the outside, like, that's, that's totally up to you. So, <clears throat> um, taking the artwork as an example, though, I'm going to kind of go with, with that. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to paint up a highlight color on the armor and that's going to be Warpstone Glow. Some of you might remember that after, at the end of part one, <clears throat> we finished by washing the armor with BL Tan Green and that created this beautifully blended green armor look. But what we want to do is give it a little bit of a pop. So by using Warpstone Glow, we're brightening the raised areas or the areas that we want to show off are kind of uh, highlighted with, with natural lighting. So I'm going to start with the with the tops of these knee pads here. I'm going to try to be painting most of my highlighting strokes I've found work really well if you do like a diagonal left to right or right to left and work your way down and just kind of decide for yourself how far you want that highlight to go. <clears throat> with these uh, brighter models like I've, I've always considered salamanders to be a brighter colored space marine chapter than many others and so I'm gonna try to go pretty uh, pretty thorough with with this highlight I'm gonna go and hit most of these armor plates and when I'm painting the lower leg because we've got that that fire motif, what I'm going to try to do is hit most of the area above the fire, but I want to leave a little darker haze, uh, kind of haloing the fire. So that darker armor color is going to be underneath, and then it's it's going to be <clears throat> coming down from the knee pad, it's going to be the highlight color, Warpstone Glow, and it's going to be that shaded BL Tan Green, and then it's going to be the fire. 
so it's going to create a kind of a shimmery heat haze that most people aren't going to see you're probably not going to get a lot of compliments on this but if you do this you'll find that it kind of raises your model up from being uh, something that I, I feel is very kind of elementary or amateurish and giving it that extra level of detail that even though you know it's not going <clears> to <throat> win any crystal brushes or, or golden demons it's a it's a technique that you can build on and that you can keep in your pocket that uh, you have this kind of layering effect in your paints and that's something see if you look right there that's exactly what I'm talking about you've got the brighter color then you've got that darker color and then you've got the fire and if, if I went straight up to the fire, it would have looked very amateurish. I think it would have looked uh, like it didn't have any kind of blend to it. Right now it looks like a pretty, pretty good blend. And you know, I've, I've had some complaints about Warpstone Glow over the, um, o over the years, or over the time that I've used it. Maybe not years, but <clears throat> I've, I've had some complaints that it's, it's too thin, it, uh, the pigment doesn't spread very well. But in this case, if you really thin it down and you really feather it out, uh, it, it, it will really help you out. It'll, it'll look pretty good. Yeah, that heat haze around the flames. And I hate, uh, you know, tooting my own horn and saying I'm so awesome. Because I, I don't really think I am. I'm always constantly learning. But that I'm, I'm pretty proud of. I think you can be proud of your work, right? I think you can look at something and say that oh, that's a good example of <clears throat> of what I can do so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the way that turned out okay yeah you're gonna see here I'm gonna try to go with a diagonal paint stroke because the paint on my wet palette is not is not working too well for me at the moment <clears throat> so I'm really trying to uh, create a good coverage I gotta get back into the, the fluff because salamanders have this, you know, really rich kind of background of being probably the only space marine chapter that really truly cares about saving human lives. I and mean, most other chapters, like, they really care about getting the mission done or, or um, you know, serving humanity as a whole or <clears throat> maybe not even serving humanity but trying to keep their chapter alive and their traditions alive and maybe if a, a world or a civilization or, or a a uh, outpost has to go up in flames due to a chaos attack in order for them to save their own people you know they'll do that but uh, most of the stories that I've read about the salamanders have shown them to be very much into you know seeing okay what's the what's the the battle plan that's gonna save the most human lives or or keep us from sacrificing needlessly and I think that's the interesting thing that <clears throat> in, in all of the Space Marine chapters or armies that you know, I keep, we keep going back to when you're reading the Horus Heresy novels is that all of the Primarchs, the uh, genetic templates for which all of these Space Marines come down from, all 18 of them had traits that were either consciously or unconsciously uh, kind of ingrained into <clears throat> all of the Space Marines uh, psyches. So, for example, um, you know, Angron, Angron was very aggressive. So the world eaters are, are naturally just more, more aggressive. And um, Fulgrim is very, Fulgrim was very, uh, very much of a perfectionist and a lover of of the arts and culture and uh, achieving perfection and humanity's um, humanity achieving perfection. <clears throat> and uh, meanwhile, you have like very the, the noble and uh, one would say almost arrogant uh, ultramarines who were very proud of their the fact that they were um, from a, a civilization of emperors and conquerors and rulers. And so, so every space marine, in some way, and in, in in some smaller percentages than others, have this kind of uh, chapter trait or quality that sets them apart from other space marines. Uh, Raven Guard, for example, are very often very moody and withdrawn and, and uh, the Dark Angels are very secretive. They're noble but they're, uh, they have lots of secrets and they don't like to, to share and be open and friendly with others. Whereas the Space Wolves are loud and gregarious and they're always into partying and uh, showing off who's the best drinker and stuff. <clears throat> so it's interesting to see that the 
the uh, salamanders, these guys that we're painting now, are uh, very much like either unconsciously or subconsciously or not there. They're very much known to be the protectors of humanity. I read this great short story about an Iron Hands squad that was going in to help a, an Imperial Hive city that was under siege from like chaos uh, Nurgle cults <clears throat> and um, the the city's defenders the militia they were so happy to see them they're like space marines uh, Adept Adeptus Astartes this is awesome you guys are gonna wipe out the chaos and courage and everything's gonna be awesome you guys are the Emperor's you know super soldier superhuman uh, you know like superheroes and then the iron hands go in and they kick butt and they're working with the human militia and they're like okay we're gonna go this way you guys cover us or we're gonna push through here you guys support us and then all of a sudden <clears throat> they, they 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 fight all the way down to this level and then they get this artifact that they were looking for and the iron hands chapter quality is they're so cold and methodical and everything has a purpose and uh, to them, the uh, the machine spirit, the power of the machine spirit, is more important than than almost anything else. So once they get this artifact, whatever it is that belonged to their chapter that somehow got lost and ended up on this planet, and they said, "Okay, that's it. We got what we came for. Peace." And they just got in their spaceships and they flew away. And the human defenders that are left are like wait what and then you know all these plague bearers and nurgle monsters and demons are are like swarming into the hive city because there's no one left to defend them anymore and all the humans are like oh space marines those guys suck and that's like the end of the story so each space marine this is something that i didn't realize when i first started but if you're a new player or you you're just starting to now get into the fluff you know look not only at the color schemes, but at the qualities of your space marines. <laughs> Ardcoat is next, <clears throat> and um, Le Lexicanum, the, the 40, 40k wiki pages. There's lots of great resources that can kind of give you more insight about this, each the characteristics of each space marine chapter. <laughs> so you're going to be painting this art coat on the shoulder pads because that's where the transfers are going to go. I also decided to paint a little numerical on this guy's right knee pad. So uh, because the, the salamanders are known as being uh, Codex Astartes compliant. You know, my, uh, my fiance, the lady boss, she says like sometimes she listens to me film or record these videos. And she's like, you know, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I realized I got to dumb down my fluff. My fluff foo is so strong. You know, I just, I, for some reason, sometimes I forget that not everybody is all up to date. I don't think, I think all of us forget that sometimes. You know, if you're just getting to this hobby or heaven forbid, you are hearing my voice right now and you are the girlfriend or fiance of someone who's painting to this video. God bless you. Bless your heart, woman or man whatever gender you are because uh, if you are not a, 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 uh, a, an avid hobbyist and you're having to listen to me drone on and on and on about the stuff that, that you have no idea what is about then um, thank you. Thank you for supporting your significant other in this and if not if you're like a cat or a dog a meow woof woof <clears throat> let your art coat dry and then come back to it so this is a couple hours later so go turn this off go watch some movies go watch some tv shows on netflix or whatever and come back to it and make sure when you do you've got your microsol and your micro set from micron industries the first one you're going to paint on is going to be micro set and what micro set does uh, for those of you who don't know is it takes a smooth glossy surface which we've we've made with our art coat and it uh, creates a very wet uh, surface for, for your transfer to go onto. It also is going to soften the transfer. So <clears throat> when we're using our transfer, I've got three transfers. Like I said, I've got the, the salamander's head. I've got a tactical space marine marking, which is the arrow. And I've got a numerical. You, uh, the reason we put art coat or a gloss varnish on first is because we want 
the art coat to create a smooth um, surface for our transfer to go onto. Sometimes the paint, when we paint on, if, if I had painted on too much of this Abaddon black onto the shoulder pads, then it'll create a very uneven surface. And when I'm trying to put my, my transfer on at this point, it would not go on smoothly. There would be a lot more air bubbles. So what, what Art Coat or any kind of gloss varnish does is it creates a nice smooth surface for your transfer to go on. And it also creates, well, it's almost like a candy coating. I don't want to say candy because I don't want people to think that. You can just stick their Space Marines in their mouths and start sucking on them. But it creates this kind of shell uh, coat. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking my, my micro set because uh, our, our transfers have not been set yet. That's, that's the way in my brain that I, I remember. <clears throat> micro set always goes first. And what I'm doing is I'm very, very gently trying to push the air bubbles out. You're not going to get all of them. Sometimes you're going to get these wrinkles or air bubbles inside. You just want to try as, as much as possible to to push them out and I, I usually try to do that from going from the center and just smoothing and pushing out towards the edges. You're gonna find though that until your microset dries and until your transfer dries, anytime you put your your bristles on it, even just to like I think in a little while right there, I, I saw an airbrush on the top and I thought, oh just kinda push it out from this angle, it moved the entire transfer. So I've always found that when you're using Microset, you want to be really patient and uh, it can be quite frustrating. But just push it down as, as much as you can, S try to get all of the air bubbles out. And at some point you're also going to notice that as you're pushing your transfer onto your figure, the transfer itself is going to be softened up and really smoothed out because of the micro set. And that is the uh, main purpose of micro set. It's to soften your transfers so they can be easier manipulated. So uh, going on to the left side now, we're going to let that, that right shoulder pad dry a little bit. I'm taking all of my transfers, I'm dipping them into a cup of water right next to me and I'm trying to push it off with my tweezers. Some of it will take longer and uh, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, you don't want to push it, you don't want to rush getting your transfers off because if it's not ready to come off, if it's still stuck to the, the sliding, the backing paper, then you're gonna have a hard time because it's gonna, it, it could rip holes in your transfer, it could tear it. That's, that's the worst thing, you do not want that. And again, we put some micro set onto the shoulder pad first, and we're now dipping our paintbrush in micro set, and we're slowly trying to push, push all the air bubbles and all the creases off. The salamanders, what I found is that the salamanders insignia here, it's a it's a tough shape to work with because it's very wide and it's not that tall. So if you look at the dragon's head, the salamander head, it's it's a very wide shape from the nose all the way to the back spines in the back. And um, when you're when you're working with that, because of the curve of the shoulder pad, the upper area right there above the brow and the lower area are not always going to be in contact with the shoulder pad because it's so wide. So the way we remedy that is we just give it some time with the micro set. The micro set is gonna it's gonna dull down and it's gonna soften the transfer eventually, but we, we do want to give it some time. So I've decided, okay, while while I do that, while while we let that set, I'm gonna go on to the numerical on the right knee pad. The way I decided to choose this was I took a look at all of the chapter insignia that was available online. And I saw that the uh, second company of, of the salamanders has a white dragon head on a black background. If uh, you want to do your chapter, a different chapter of salamanders, then uh, you just have to double check because the salamander head in some chapters or some uh, companies, I mean, are going to be a different color 
So you might have a green salamander head for, I don't remember if it was the third company, and then like an orange fiery one for the fourth company, something like that. And uh, in, in those cases, if you want to do those companies, all you have to do is go back over the dragon head with that appropriate color. I decided because the second company is going to be uh, full of, of veterans and elite soldiers, I decided that the, the gold rimmed shoulder pads and the golden helmet would mark this guy out as a, a veteran and so he would uh, be a member of the second company. And that's what this <coughs> uh, knee pad insignia, uh, numerical, is going to signify. That he is a member of the second company maybe the second squad in the second company. Not really too sure what the, the knee numericals mean. I think every chapter is uh, different because I think the Dark Angels and the Blood Angels, uh, depending on what color their knee pads are and um, if it's in like quarter checkers or split colors or whatever, Okay, the tricky thing also is you, when you're posting something like a number on your on your knee pad, you want to make sure that the number is even with how the knee pad is facing. So because our trooper here, our space marine, is kind of got his legs spread and the right leg is kind of pushed out at an angle, his knee pad is kind of pointing up towards the center of his mass at a little bit of an angle. So that too is going to be a little bit of a bent angle, if you see there. All right, so after about a half an hour, I'm coming back, and after uh, one more application of microset, I, I put on one more after I turn off the camera, and I let it dry, and then half an hour later, I'm coming back with the microsol. And microsol is the, uh, the one that's going to dissolve your transfer. And that what that means is that after the micro set has kind of softened the transfer, kind of set it to where you want it to be, it's, it's kind of dried a little bit, so it's kind of stuck on there. What the microsol is going to do is it's going to dissolve your transfer so that the, uh, it, it's going to kind of really stick it onto the, the surface. So by itself, microsol could could work if you can only get microsol it'll it'll dissolve it but you might not have it set in correct the correctly uh, the place that you want it to be uh, on the opposite hand microset will soften your transfer and set it to where you want it to be but if you're not careful and you're you're um, touching your transfer and you're moving your models around if it's not dissolved to the surface that you want it to be it'll have that danger of moving so put together Microsol, Microset from Micron Industries is really, really great to have in your toolbox together. I'm going back over now with Gehenna's Gold and uh, I'm touching up the helmet first. And I'm going to go on to kind of clean up any of the golden surfaces that I feel need a, a little bit of accent. So the chest insignia there. Gehenna's gold is a nice bright gold so for, for our purposes it's it's perfect. I'm also going to be getting the rims of the shoulder pad here. Trying to get underneath just in case you, you know there's always going to be someone that picks up your model turns it upside down and says oh you didn't get the underside of their shoulder pads. And you're like oh Clarence, how many times have I told you about picking up my Space Marines? Okay, getting all the gold details before we move on to the end here. Dawnstone, now we're really coming up to the finish. So Dawnstone is going to be the highlight that we use to highlight the casing of the bolter. Dawnstone is, is a great edge highlight for any kind of black. Uh, in, in this case though, the, the shoulder pads, which is our other prominent black area, is it doesn't have a hard edge to it because the rims of the shoulder pad are not in black. 
Strauss doing a chapter like the Black Templars or the Iron Hands, which is predominantly black, you would have those hard edges like the shoulder pads, the um, the boots, the just the rims and the edges of all of the armor pieces like the legs, the gauntlets, the fingers. Uh, for for us though, with because the shoulder pads are black, but they're that smooth, rounded surface. There's not going to be any hard edges to glint the light off of. So I'm I'm going to avoid using Dawnstone for that. But I am going to use Dawnstone on the back to kind of highlight the, uh, the soup that super hard rubberized joint material. And we're coming up to the end. So in, in the last section, what I'm going to be doing is trying to get rid of that transfer shine there. So what I did was I, I painted or I sprayed purity seal on our model. And uh, what that did was it created a kind of foggy look on the transfers because they're still a little bit wet from the microsol. So uh, I've given it some time to dry now. This is about a day later and uh, the transfer is completely sealed onto the model except for the parts that have kind of folded over. So what I'm taking is my modeling knife. It is not my modeling knife, this is actually a sculpting tool, but I'm just really gently rubbing it across all of the uh, air bubbled surfaces that, that have folded over. You, you want to try to avoid using your hobby knife or any kind of surface like an X-Acto knife that is really sharp because you don't want to gouge into your model. The, um, the hobby sculpting tool that I'm using is very helpful because it's it's got a point on the edge but it's not going to gouge into your model and uh, so I can scrape it very gently across the surface of the transfer and it will remove that extra plastic but it won't um, gouge deep furrows into the plastic. So after I clean this up the last thing I'm going to be doing is taking some <clears throat> um, Chaos or Abaddon Black and painting in the areas around the transfer so that it gets rid of that kind of foggy, misty look of the purity seal and it also kind of tones or tones everything, uh, brings everything together and uh, it keeps the, the tone consistent in the black. And that's how I would do it. Thanks for watching everybody. It's uh, really great pleasure to have you along and uh, thank you for watching my series on how to paint a salamander space marine. I've got some more videos coming up, um, for example how to finish the Sylvanian state trooper and also how to paint Gorok for the Lizardman army in Warhammer Fantasy because uh, rumors are there are going to be some big shakeups in Warhammer Fantasy coming up so I want to make sure I get that Gorok video out. You can check me out at my uh, studio, warbostastudios.com. And as of the filming of this, there's still some time left in January. So we're having a, a grand opening sale, if you haven't heard about it. And basically you can get $100 off any commission job worth at least $500. So check out my website, warbostastudios.com and uh, drop me a line at warbostastudios at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Facebook at warbostay and on Twitter, uh, Twitter at or boss Tay. Twinter. What? Uh, thanks a lot, you guys. It's It's been uh, really great hearing from all of you. Thank you for the comments. I'm sorry I haven't gotten a chance to answer all of them, but uh, rest assured I will as soon as I can. Raven Guard coming up next for Project First Founding. Thanks for watching. Latest players! <laughs>